Hey, welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. It's your favorite episode of the week. It is the episode when we review photos. It's the photo review episode. Welcome. Glad you guys are tuned in. Thanks for hanging out with me live. You know, Thursdays, expert analysis. I love looking at your photos. This week, of course, we're going to be awarding photo of the week. But also, Sunday is the Photo of the Year Awards. I'm super excited about the Photo of the Year Awards. I'm super excited to see all of these categories, share them with you, and also just share the best work that was submitted and just like last year in all the best categories. So I'm super excited about that. Ah, today, we are getting into some real photo reviews. So... If you've submitted your photos and you made them in by six o'clock, today's the day we're going to look at them. Just so you know, I do have some spots open for my mentorship program. So if you've been waiting to get into my mentorship program, I opened it up again on, I think it was Tuesday. So somebody's booked already. There are spots. When I hit 10 people, I turn it off. But the master class, the master class is starting as well. I want to talk a little bit about that later on, but let's get into your favorite episode. Let's open the Discord and see what y'all got for me. All right. As you know, if you join this channel and become a member here, you can join the Discord. I mean, you should join the Discord whether you're a member or not, because the Discord is amazing. But the bonus of becoming a member here is that you get your the ability to have your photos reviewed i unlock the folders the review folders for the members of this channel and also by the way because of the members of this channel i have 230 members at this point that is the reason why you have commercial free content also if you're watching and you're a subscriber but not a member you haven't hit the join button you're not able to talk with all the other people who are talking live right now. And you're not able to ask me questions unless you super chat. So that's an opportunity is also <laughs> and to also control my stream. As you see, these guys are doing right now. All right, let's get into it. You guys ready? You guys have been with me for so long and I appreciate the hardcores. Let's go, baby. These twos have been with me since they were 40. Let's go. Let's see what we have in the submission gifted folder. Member. Yo, Durell, gifted five members. Let's go, Durell, before the party even starts. Durell Scott, gifting five members. Thank you so, so, so much. So nice of you. Anytime New I get member. a member, anytime someone gifts members, I have to drop the smoke, so Duro, you got the smoke, Guanin. Thank you for gifting five New members. Member. Let's go, Duro. Appreciate you, my guy. Look at this guy. Got to show him a little love on the screen. All you, Vladimir. New also, member. Digital Dad, Toner, Stuart, Manuel, Ruiz. Y'all got gifted memberships right there from your man, Duro. All right, let's get into our first photo. New my member. My brother is a painter and an incredibly talented painter. He has recently submitted some photos. He submitted a single photo. And my brother, my brother paints cars and he's so, so, so talented. So he painted a car and he also is like, he does these incredible reflective mirror surfaces. So from time to time, he shows us what he's actually doing with his paintwork. Last week, I didn't give you guys an assignment. I do have an amazing assignment for you this week. So make sure you stay to the end of today's episode. All right, big brother Leslie, let's see your POV painter shot. It's pretty sick. Definitely know that you shot this one with your Samsung. I appreciate it. I know it's also harder to bring your pro camera into the booth because it's like not the best to have your pro camera in where you're spraying paint. I like it. The vibe where 
it's high it's hyper lit i love how this is reflecting on the car obviously showing your hand in here while you're at the same time taking the picture is super dope it's good composition and again you left a little bit of masthead here because if it goes as an 8x10 it crops here so it works all this is kind of extra space but if it's a cover it also works up there as well good deal my brother les thank you for starting the party he submitted that picture last week all right let's look at the next submission thank you big brother appreciate you my brother my older brother les is a um painter and an artist and a car painter and he does photography for to help him like see to how he shoots wildlife as well but then he also paints the wildlife that he sees he's a super talented guy and my biggest inspiration he's my older brother i'm in my 50s he's my older brother so he's just touching the 60s and uh still watching my show still supporting it's pretty dope appreciate you big bro all right let's get into our next shooter Stephen C says, I took this on my way up to Pennsylvania about a month ago, day before my surgery. It is Springfield Falls in Grove City, Pennsylvania. Sony A7 III, Tamron 28-75, G1, shot at 33 millimeters. F11, ISO 100, 1.5 shutter, uh, <laughs> second shutter speed. All right, let's see this picture from Stephen C. Let's go, Stephen. This is beautiful. Like, just beautiful, dude. I'm going to hide my camera. Like, honestly, Stephen, you get the smoke. This is so good. Like, yes, honestly, yes. really, really strong work. I really like the leading line. There's no real other way to compose this, but the way that your eye goes along the edge of the rock and then down the water, I really like it. The fact that it's just a little bit brighter up here really works for me. The slow shutter speed, which really shows you the motion of the water is just amazing. I mean, this is photography 101, Stephen, like really, really great i'm sure that you shot some other frames so there is like some other possibilities as far as cropping i mean obviously i'm limited as to how i can crop it just because it's already pre-framed but you can see the only options would be like shooting less of the upper and going all waterfall instead of showing what you how you have it but i think that you did really really well this is a banger you should be thrilled steven great 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 photo great photo thanks for submitting amazing by the way you can follow me on instagram right there at steve cardi but you can also follow the behind the picture, which is my viewers account, which is essentially your Instagram account. It's BTP with Cardi, the letter B, the letter T, the letter P. In other words, behind the picture. BTP with Cardi, it's viewer images. And I don't mention that Instagram account a lot. We have 300 followers. Can you please support other viewers of this show and submit your work? Because if you submit your work, that's where your work's gonna end up. You're gonna see your work in the behind the picture Instagram. So BTP with Cardi, make sure you follow. We have like 300 subscribers or 300 followers. Please help us get to like a thousand at least. I got 17,000 people here watching me. Come on now. Steven C, great job. Christina Sunshine. Uh, low ambient light, two four light soft boxes. Um, right and left atop a black mylar sheet nikon z8 250th of a second at 6.3 shot manual iso 800 nikkor macro lens 105 um, f 2.8 attempt to capture flower reflections in the mylar all right let's have a look of what christina sunshine is doing Christina Sunshine. I definitely appreciate the sharpness for sure. Definitely appreciate the sharpness. The tricky thing is, is that you're trying to render both black and a reflection. 
And because of that, it seems that you might be doing some darkening like around here and around here and around here. Like I see those darkening areas and especially up here in the top of the photo. So I'm not sure what's actually creating this line. Um, oops, what's creating this line? Why won't it let me enlarge? What's creating this line here? That's what I'm trying to figure out, um, Christine. The composition, the really nice triangle is really gorgeous. I really like that. I mean, even if it is, even if it is center focused, still compositionally, I think, I think it's compositionally strong. One thing I would consider is dropping this um, down to here, pushing this over to this. So it basically your placement is here possibly here and then this other one stands alone on its own page and then that gives you the ability to have a gutter and nothing dropped right in the center again if this was a magazine picture you know that you're going to want to see not the the center of the frame cutting right through your picture like just like this that's the center of your frame so if you look at it this way now you realize that you actually have space up here for something and if all you need to do is actually move this over um, and now that frees you up to actually rotate this one put the leaves on top which will fill up some space and really let you highlight just one i hope that helps you it's a great photograph my suggestion if you're trying to render black with a reflection it's black plexiglass like that's that's how you do it there's black with a reflection the only real way is with um black plexi all you need to do i mean i have this on my amazon wish list let me just sign in here for some reason i'm not signed in um but i'll show you christine so you get um you get an idea um all right let me show you this wish list here da -da 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 -da. wish list because what i did is i put this on my pro photographer's recommended wish list and the problem is is like you know, I get a, a nickel if one of somebody buys from this list, but most of you who watch me are in the US. So because of that, I had to create some genius links and genius links works doesn't matter what country you're in. Let me find this. Um, let me find this plexiglass for you. This is it right here. So this is it. Amazon search up plexiglass sheet opaque black. This is two feet by two feet. And this sheet is how you render jet black with a reflection. And literally, it's 26 bucks. You buy two of them and you have even more space in order to do it. So that's going to make it so you're not having to do cleanup. Mylar is not the thing. Mylar is not the thing that we use. It's definitely a good attempt. But you'll see, Christina, once you once you start getting the right like set props to do these still lifes it becomes so much easier to actually shoot them so i hope that helps you miss just search black plexiglass on on amazon okay you'll definitely find it i don't think i have it um i mean i i if you wait a day or you email me i'll send you a link but you can also just search it super easy all right, I hope that helps you. Let's get into our next shooter. Next shooter is I Stony. First time sharing here. Attached as a photo from my last shoot, saw it on the Sony A7 II 50mm 1.8. First time using the strobe, so this was more experimental than anything else. 50 millimeter f5 to 50th of a second. Let's have a look here, mister. All right, let me see, make sure I get your name right. It is I. We're going to call you I. All right, I. So first attempt with the strobe. The first thing I'm going to ask is, did you have a light meter? Did you have a light meter? 
Um, light meter is going to make it see so really nail your exposure. All your, although your exposure is not bad. Like your processing is not bad. The idea is actually pretty good. And your execution, lighting, placement, everything is... <laughs> yes again yes her hair is in front of her face a little bit and we're losing her a little bit but there's so many things that you did right here you have like a perfect profile meaning the perfect profile to like highlight exactly the side of her face which gives us brand identity you have like motion happening where her hair is actually flying and you caught it you can actually see the shape of her arm and the fact that she has muscles and she's got the right outfit, the right pose and the right attitude. And if you look at it as a cover, you're right on point. I honestly, very, very proud of you. Welcome to the crew. So glad you're here. So glad you're new. And so glad you're putting pictures on the table for me to look at. This is a really great attempt. Great attempt. I'm giving you an 11 as far as your first photograph, great job. Don't forget also, we need to show this woman's face. We need to really get some eye contact, straight on eye contact is so powerful when it comes to photography. And if you look at some of the portraits that I shoot, you'll see how important and how strong eye contact is. I really work on eye contact. I think that it's super important with like whatever type of photography you're doing that there is some sort of like eye contact. And when you're shooting models, when you're shooting really pretty girls, hitting the eye contact is, is like a weapon, you know? Let me show you some powerful eye contact and how how eye contact can really like help you take it to the next level eye contact is it's so powerful so powerful so work just work eye contact sometimes you know it's fun it gets you like pushing boundaries and again, I, every time I show the slightest Question. booby or something, anytime I show one sec, Vladimir, anytime I show the slightest booby or something like that here on YouTube, I've been getting like, um, they've been taking away my monetization. So I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more hyper specific about the stuff that I show. All right. Eye contact, eye contact It's powerful. So when you're practicing, when you're practicing in the studio, when you're messing around, make sure you just shoot a variety. Make sure you shoot variations. Make sure you like shoot the profile, shoot the three quarter, but shoot the dead on stark, like healer looking dead at camera. It's so powerful, so powerful. And I mean, even for me, why? I, I always try to do my best to make eye contact when I'm recording, when I'm podcasting, when I'm live streaming, is it actually connects with you. You know, you actually feel me when I do this. So it's really important to make sure when you're shooting in studio or when you're shooting portraits in general, that <laughs> looking away is okay, but make sure that you also nail the eye contact. It's super, it's super important. All right. Good, good, good first attempt, I, Stony. All right, let's see Tony. Tony said, hey, Cardi crew, here's some of my first black and white attempts. Found the spot, placed Lois in it, and she made the pose for me. How would you critique it, improve it, please? Many thanks, Tony. Sony A6600, Sigma 18 to 50. I saw 107.118 hundredth of a second from Tony. All right, Tony asks, how would I improve this photo? First of all, Tony, thanks for your note and thanks for submitting. Um, off the top, I really like the sky. I really like this brightness that's coming in here. 
And I really like this highlight that's on this side of her body. It's really nice. Where you drop the horizon line is great. You've heard me talk about how to lower yourself so you're not throwing that horizon line like right through the head or someplace that's like super distracting. I like to try to make my horizon line go as low as possible. And in this particular case, Tony, I would have lowered myself and dropped the horizon line like right there because this sky is so powerful just to give the sky more power and to make it so you focus on this half of the picture because now look at this if you see this now just her with the sky you see how you're like oh shit just like that as soon as i do this you're like oh shit you're right because now you see how the horizon actually creates two pictures it creates this picture up here and then it creates this second picture down here and down here, which is like the second part of the picture, this is where we kind of lose it a little bit. First of all, her waist is twisted in the wrong way. Like it's hard, it's hard to describe, but her waist is twisted the wrong way, meaning her body language only is working from the upper half of her body. But once you go to the lower half of her body and specifically right here, you can see how her legs are weird. And then this part of her body, you're like, yeah, her legs are really weird. And then when you get to her feet, you can see her feet are like almost too planted facing you. So I would need her to like rotate a little bit so her hips line up a little bit. And then also the flip flops have to come off because the flip flops like it's a barefoot scenario it's a she's on the edge it's like barefoot just makes this photo like just a little bit higher end and the sandals make it just feel it's it's a little it's a little bit too touristy now with her wearing the sandals as far as the outfit like this bottom is okay but the top is way stronger the top is way stronger. So the top and this little hint that you're getting here, this little hint under the arm is really nice. And the little hint here, like, but once you get to here, the waistband is start is not exactly right. And it, it's a little simple as far as an outfit. And when you're really looking at it like this, it's like, yeah, that's not that flattering for a girl who has a body like this. So it's like you can go full dress. You can go full dress and have the dress in the wind. It doesn't necessarily ha have to show her body, but I just think that this particular piece is like, eh, you know? So that's my take. For me, um, the best half of the picture is this right here. And you can see, like if you just crop the photo like this, that's an amazing editorial photo. But I think when you go into approaching the photos, you have to understand is like, what is this for? What am I trying to say? And when you isolate the sky and you have a person against the sky like this, you can see how powerful it is. And just knowing that will tell you, okay, the next time I hit this attempt, I'll try to drop the horizon line like right there. So I can get a three quarter picture of her up against that sky. That's my two cents, Tony. I think you did a great job. It's a great shot. And I love the sky. I think you could even bring more out in the sky by using um, the highlight slider. Just use the highlight slider, which obviously goes that way and that way. Just put the highlight slider that way. Give it like about negative 20 to like negative 40 and just see how much this sky starts to come back. So you actually start to see the clouds even more and to go even further because it's black and white. Take the blue slider, the blue saturation slider in Lightroom and slide that way to minus 100. And you'll see you can make these parts of the sky almost black and this clouds will still remain white. So you'll get that like separation. So that's my two cents in a bag of chips, Tony. I hope that helped you, my guy. Thanks for submitting. You guys still with me? You still with me? You still with me? You having a good time? I hope so. I'm having a good time. By the way, um, I'm wearing head to toe, baby. This podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret. Meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh
What? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. This isn't just another piece of clothing. It's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies. But you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of this script? Oh my god, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow, who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my god, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, God, this merch this represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy's a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic, to be honest. But I'll keep that to myself. Okay. <sighs> Let the world know you're a part of something bigger. A photographer on YouTube's clothing collection that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? Sorry, what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. I am aware, as the narrator, I'm not allowed to insert my own narrative. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did that suit you? That was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show hilarious yo you guys are so funny <laughs> the comments when i play my spot just makes me laugh i mean you know this is a commercial free podcast but at the same time the members of this channel make this podcast so great everybody who watched this make this so great everybody who controls my stream makes this so great and playing my spot just reminds you like hey have a look at my merch store like i put so much effort into it i have two merch stores it's over 150 items there's more items than you could even possibly choose from but i don't know it supports the stream i put the money back into buying gear and stuff like that like microphones and shit and it just makes the podcast better appreciate you guys for supporting all right, let's get into our next submitter. Our next submitter is Sebastian K. Sebastian says, hello, beautiful people, which Sebastian says. <laughs> which Sebastian says, by the way, every single time this guy enters chat, he says, hello, beautiful people. And he's always bringing good vibes. So Sebastian, thank you, man, for always bringing the good vibes. Don't think that I don't notice. I always notice, man. And you're always here 10 minutes before the stream starts with a couple other hardcores like Steven C. And uh, my man, um, Matt Stone, Black Phoenix was up in there. I appreciate you guys for being there even 10 minutes before the stream starts. Let's look at Sebastian K. This is my headshot for my shoot at the end of November. A74 Sony, Sigma 35 millimeter, shot at ISO 100, F6.3, ISO um, uh, at 100 of a second. Shot with a Godox 8060 lamp. My light is fully manual without TTL. So I'm learning the settings as I change from the Sigma lens to Sony. The next thing is to buy a light meter because I preach light meter like it's my job because it is my job to tell you the things that you need. Like this, my light meter. This light meter I've had since um, my first year of business probably. So this is like 30 years old and reads light like this, reads flash and reads ambient light and meters the light that's falling on the subject. What happens with the camera? The camera gets tricked because the camera can't read the light that's falling on the subject. It can only Gifted read the member. light that's bouncing back to the camera. Calligraphy, is that you? Is that you? Again, dropping another gifted membership. This guy, calligraphy, drops a gifted membership 
every episode and has been doing so for like three months. So Steve K, you just got gifted a membership from Calligraphy. Make sure you join the Discord and connect your YouTube and Discord so you can submit photos. The light meter meters light that's falling on the subject. So you can't lie to a light meter, meaning if it's bright behind, like you're being backlit, hold this in front of your subject, hide the backlighting, take the reading, and it gives you an accurate reading. Where your camera, when you aim at something with a window, that's why you get a silhouette, because the camera only sees the light that's coming into it. You know what I mean? And a camera doesn't know that you're trying to shoot that shadow thing in the middle. So our eyes compensate, but the camera doesn't. So the second reason is because the, the, this meters flash. You set your camera, ISO, or you set your light meter at ISO 100, set your camera at ISO 100. Set this at your flash sync speed, which is 125, 180, 200, or 250, depending on your camera. Sync, set it less than your sync speed, because the shutter, by the way, opens like this opens like this and after a certain speed it opens but it's already closing before it's opened like when you're at 250 350 500 thousand like the shutter by the time you're at eight thousandth of a second it's just a slit that just opens and drags from the top to the bottom so that's how you're actually able to achieve an eight thousandth of a second with a camera the shutter's not opening and closing that fast it's just a slit so the flash sync speed is that su shutter speed where your shutter is completely open before it closes so all of that to say this meters flash so you set this for your flash sync speed the iso that you're using and then you push the button pop the flash and it'll tell you exactly to the tenth of a stop what the reading is. So then you just set your camera at F8 and then you do your shot and it comes out exactly perfect. You might have to move it a third this way or this way or move the light a touch this way or this way, but it gives you the most accurate light. And with flash, you will be shooting tests for half an hour before you nail, and you'll never nail a perfect exposure without a light meter. So you wanna be a pro, just get a light meter. It's just kind of like you buy it once. I've had this for 30 years and I want to buy a new one just because the new ones are so swanky and they have memory and they hold readings yes yes. and all this stuff. But as long as you have a flash meter, that's not one of those old dial ones that does this. As long as you have like a modern meter that reads studio flash, it's the only light meter you need. And you could buy one used for like 250 bucks but expect to spend like 500 bucks on these because you buy it once all right so let's look at my man steve sebastian 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 k all right sebastian ah <sighs> good exposure good sharpness you nailed this steven i mean uh sebastian again i have steven c on my brain sebastian you nailed this exposure the location is good. The look on her face is good. You're using relatively, I would say, it's like it's safe light, but you lit her nicely. You lit her nicely. You put just a touch of drama into her face, which matches the scene. Like it's outdoors at night, so it matches the scene. If this was a studio shot, I would say light her a little bit more butterfly, a little bit more to the front to give that contour, to give that kind of shape to like narrow her cheeks and drop that no shadow down here instead of on this side. But it still works. It, it really works. Like I actually am really happy with this light. I love the way that there's just a little hint of orange in the background and you're pulling that off here. She's wearing the right black so you like her outfit is so right that you just see her and the expression on her face it's it's not a pose it's real she's got a little bit of a furrow between her brow because she's a little concerned with what you're like the expression on a person's face when you shoot them like you can actually truly read their mind like really but Honestly, Steven, as far as, oh my God, say it one more time. Sebastian Kawaka, holy shit, Sebastian. You nailed this. You nailed this so hard. Apologize for calling you Steven. Again, it's because I'm, I have like 
anyways no excuses my bad so you nailed this this is a cover this is an editorial picture it falls in line perfectly with this week's assignment which you guys don't know what it is yet um but <laughs> refer to this picture when we when i start talking about this assignment for me if i didn't state it already this is an 11. you nailed it you nailed the exposure you nailed the sharpness you nailed the light you nailed the outfit it proves to me sebastian like it proves to me your talent and it also proves to me like you can make photos you are an incredible portrait photographer this is your wheelhouse like you're so strong sebastian when you're intimate and close with a portrait like you weaponize this stuff and and i want you to understand that this is your wheelhouse so you can lean into this and actually do more you know the picture you made of the guy with the surfboard seb like i was losing my mind over that photo in that session it's a natural light picture this is a studio light picture and you equally nailed it i have high expectations of you my friend and you raised the bar today you raised the bar sebastian so good shit. that is a photo from sebastian well done New really member. good shit. hey carl welcome my guy thanks for becoming a member appreciate you welcome aboard welcome to the cardi crew appreciate you all right let's get into our next submission slippy hollow <laughs> okay you guys are getting good you guys are getting good i'm just saying that two in a row three in a row starting to feel like you guys are getting good slippy hollow says hey gang sharing my first studio shoot session feels like my first editorial portrait shot on the sony a7r3 iso 100 55 millimeter f 5.6 at 125 first studio session from slippy hollow i am so god darn happy with you slippy hollow let's go yo i i kind of had an idea that you were like good i kind of had an idea you were good but this light this picture is so inspired this is such a magazine cover like do you know that you're this good like has it registered yes yes. with you that this photo you hit out of the ballpark this photo could be mine a matter of fact i'm gonna start telling people that this is my photo no i'm just kidding i'd never do that but know that this is at my level you know like this is literally a completely acceptable magazine cover full page spread poster like you nailed this so hard and for your first studio shoot this rembrandt lighting this like that little pocket the expression it like the skull the hands oh my god the the outfit like the I, i'm telling you this is so good so good and i and i want you to know and i'm not trying to like blow any kind of smoke this is top level work so you just slippy hollow set a new bar you set a new bar for you for yourself and because you've set a new bar for yourself my expectations now are high this is your bar this is now this better be in your on your portfolio like this bet and i also now i want to see more from this session feel free to post more from this session in the discord and the just chatting for the rest of the crew to see i'd like to see more from this session you did really really well um small small things make sure you're super tight on the skin retouching there's just a couple of small things like once you really go in on the skin and the whole idea with skin retouching it looks like you did nothing which is great make sure that you're not doing any kind of blur 
Like it's really important to not use the blur tool, but to use the dodge and burn in the patch tool. We don't repair anything that is natural or a scar. Something that would be there two weeks from now, we don't repair. So you don't fix this because that's a scar. You don't fix this because that's actually her nose. She's got a little bit of a bump there. But we take away like these small things, like these little blemishes here. We take away this little highlight here. Fix this, you know, take away a couple of like these little patches along here. There's a couple of things under here that you could clean up here, here, a small little thing there. And then a couple of things here, here, here around her mouth. Um, her, where's my, uh, hello cursor. There you are. This little thing on her chin here. This thing down here, these little highlights, this little piece here, this is natural. So you leave that, but it, it, it's so, it's so minor. Like the, the things that I would change, fix or retouch are so minor. Obviously you have to go in on her shirt and fix all of these little flecks of dust that end up showing up on wool. You know what I mean? Just go in and clean all these small things. Um, but this is an 11 out of 10. You should be absolutely thrilled. This is wicked. Great shot. Great shot. That, my friends, is Slippy Hollow. All right. Next. Prod Long's Sword. Prod Long Sword. Okay. Captured this minimal water reflection shot, then flipped it upside down. Okay. Okay, so I captured this minimal water reflection shot, then I flipped it upside down. Shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Plus, Canon 50mm with the Speed Booster. ISO 100 F10 at 1 60th of a second. Uh, this is so good. This is so good. I'm so happy with today's episode. This is so, so good. When you realize that you're looking at a reflection and you realize that that's the plane in the water and this person is in the water and this whole photo is upside down. Like once you actually wrap your brain around that, you realize that this is a profound photo. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. A couple of secrets just from a pro photographer. You cropped this to 8x10, which I do understand. 8x10 is something that is a very natural frame size, but 8x10, which is 8 inches this way and 10 inches that way. This is 10x8 which is 10 inches wide that way and eight inches down. In that case, when you're holding the camera horizontally, you actually have to include the whole frame because the whole frame is exactly two pages in a magazine. The way that the camera proportions work when you shoot two by three, it's exactly two pages in a magazine. But if you crop to eight by 10 or 10 by eight, you'll see here that it's not two pages in a magazine. It's actually, it's very narrow when you crop that way. So when you shoot horizontally, it's the whole frame. There is no eight making it a 10 by eight. That only works vertically, just FYI. So very, again, it's a, it's the smallest thing. Just recrop the shot or just reprocess the thing and like take out the, the extra cropping. It's a fantastic photo. Like it's actually nuts. You know, you should be super, super proud. Um, but also just know like our eye is so trained for 16 by nine. We're so trained for widescreen. So like the three by two proportion is where you're going for, for this eyesight. Very, very great picture, Longsword. Great shot. Whew. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun for me, man. I hope it's fun for you guys, too. 
Like I, I actually, seeing you guys improve makes me happier than really I think anything. Seeing you improve, seeing photography get better, seeing yes people who've yes. submitted before and also seeing people who've never submitted before makes me so happy. All right, Anna says, hey Cardi, here's another photo from the family trip featuring my fearless niece, Nika, shot in the middle of the day with a Nikon D750 F5, 800th of a second, ISO 64. This is a photo from Anna. Anna, this is pretty mental. Like what a brave kid. Look at the expression on this kid's face. <laughs> and look at how high up and how like, death defying that swing looks this is really great a great cover like look at it as a cover look at it as a magazine cover like it's so great i love where you dropped the horizon line again the more you hear me talk about dropping the horizon line and lowering the horizon line in your frames you're starting to see how powerful it is look at where anna dropped the horizon line she put it below the, she put it below the seat like this is chosen like that was a, a chosen thing because if not you're gonna you're gonna miss just how high she is so you really nailed the composition i really love the sky yes, the yes. sky is really great obviously the sun is coming like hardcore down like the sun is just radically coming down you can see from how low her how straight down her shadows go and and like the raccoon eyes on her face you said that like shot in the middle of the day but still you made this work so well and having her have sunglasses on actually made it better honestly made it even better and the scream her outfit like everything just makes this photo win and a another 11 you guys are making today's photo of the week incredibly difficult you're making the photo of the week now like why 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 you do this to me why why why, why you do this to me why you make it so hard honestly why do you make it so hard holy crowly more more let's get more more show me more photography it's a photo from anya Oya on yana okay i'll get it on yana i'll get it give me a second on yana rosa so hey cardi here's a photo of a fellow local dj in atlanta it's my first shoot of 2024 shot on january 1. photo was made with a nikon d7500 iso uh, 400 50 millimeter f4 at 500th of a second on Yana Rosa, her first po photo of the year. I really like a lot of the aspects of this photo, man. Honestly, you guys are, are doing well. What I think that you're mastering right now is the open shade on Yana. The open shade, the exposure that you have on her face here because she's not, you're not shooting her in direct light shooting her in shade and because you're shooting her in shade as you've seen my like master natural light video i'm sure i talk about the power of open shade if you haven't watched it watch it blue background says master master natural light and it's all about shooting in open shade this is epic now I know why you shot her here, having her on the side where she could actually work the railing and lean up against it. It gives you like a little bit of texture. Like I definitely see that, but I don't think it's the right spot for the photo. And the reason is just because of the AS, whatever that says here, and this, the black line, the fact that this is white and this is very bright brighter than her white t-shirt brighter than her skin it forces our eye to go to this area of the photo first and then as we scan there we're also looking over here which we're seeing these highlights which kind of make the background for me just a little bit distracting when you're thinking about shooting for magazines the whole idea is that this picture is now a cover so there's the cover and then there's also going to be 
this girl's got it going on written right here in block text and then over here there's also going to be other text and then over here there's going to be another block of text so when you learn like as a photographer you realize that shooting editorially and getting hired to shoot for magazines it's all about finding the locations that are non-distracting so they look great in print and if you see if you do a search that just says like magazine covers I want you to watch the the consistency like watch how m a majority of magazine covers are shot in a really non-distracting way m a majority of editorial covers are shot in a incredibly non-distracting way so you just see the subject you don't see anything else you just see the person and if it's on or with a location or there's another element, it's in such a way that it's stylized so it doesn't take away from the main subject. So how your photography is going to literally skyrocket is in your choice of location. If you start to think like, I'm now looking for not just, I'm looking for the, where the light isn't, which is open shade, but as well, I'm looking for, and I made a video about it. It's called Rules for Getting Published. And um, it, I talked just about this, how backgrounds are always just like, it, it, they can never fight with the subject. They can never fight with the subject. There's a picture of Rihanna. You can see it's like the same light. It's the open shade light. So you have that part down. It's just now also making sure your what's behind the subject is also super masterful. Once you sort of nail that, once you nail that for your location pictures, and again, there's also all kinds of things like you can get a background and just like this, bring a background, put the background outside and take photos. Like there's some, and that's something that one of my assistants, Jason's doing. So you'll see the background is always stylized. Whoops, where was that um, ebony picture again? Essence, I mean, here it is. The background is always like stylized like it has to be it can't it can't be an afterthought even pictures like this were relatively busy it still works with the sensibility of what this guy is and it's relatively monochromatic so that's what i want you to think about next when it comes to shooting photos is you've mastered the looking for shade now it's shade and non-distracting so you can really just focus on your subject you know what i mean all right yana it's a great shot though by the way but how much better you're going to be in three months is going to break your brain you know that right you're going to be so much better just these critiques and then going out now and acting on it your next session of 2024 is going to be like here so Good for you. It's the only way that you can learn the, the mistakes that you're making regularly is by putting your work up for, for critique. Every photographer that's working at a high level had another photographer at a higher level teaching them how to get there. That's how everybody does it, seriously. So you guys watching me here, I'm just doing it for you on YouTube. That's all. Um, all right, next. Let's get into Joshua Hun. Joshua says, I jumped out of my comfort zone and asked this stranger on the street if I could take his picture. It was a lot of fun. Looking forward to feedback to make these better next time. Canon R6 85 shot at 2.8 at a 2,000th of a second at ISO 3200. I think the ISO is already too high. I haven't even looked at the picture yet, Joshua. I, to, I mean, I know you're probably looking for that look. But when you're shooting with a camera that's so, so high high end, like you have an R6 and you're shooting at a 2,000th of a second and shooting at a 2,000th of a second is telling you that you could easily drop to like, and with an 85, you could drop to a hundredth of a second. You know what I mean? And you're shooting at 3,200 and you could drop that easily to 400. 
You know what I mean? So you're you're skying your ISO. It, it's way high, which then means your shutter speed has to be way high. So again, just think your ISO doesn't need to go over ISO 1000, like ever. Like it really rarely does. Um, let's have a look at what Joshua has done. The photo is dope though. The pose is dope dope i like the swagger i like the swagger of it and the leading line is really good the leading line oops this is great the depth of field from the 85 how you offset him it's really great i want you to watch your headspace because you can see here as a cover it actually starts to get like you now have to cut him. <laughs> you now have to cut him um, and, and then put him in front of the masthead, which kind of makes it a little bit difficult. Also, you can see down here, we could have easily cut like right there under that second or the foot that's up, which would have given us a little bit more room for a masthead there. No, also when this is an eight by 10, that's an inch. This is a second inch right here. When this is an eight by 10, know that that's now the picture. We're gonna lose that toe because you have no room on the top to crop. So an eight by 10 proportion, which is a four by five proportion is going to be a crop that kind of feels about like that. So you also have to keep that in mind when you shoot vertical that you have to give a little bit more top and bottom and preferably also a little bit more headspace. I would, I like to drop the head like around a fourth or a third. Like that's kind of like, I like the top of the head to come in around here because it gives you lots of room for the masthead to drop in. You know what I mean? Just things to think about for the composition. As far as the picture though, good exposure. This could come up maybe a third, um, possibly a third of a stop here on the exposure. His outfit, the headphones, like just the vibe. It's almost a lifestyle picture. The fact that he's got a bunch of shit on his pants and beat up boots, like just a real pick that I actually, um, really appreciate i think that there's something hello can i have this photo back please there it is yeah there's something really there i like the fact that you made it black and white as well i just think that the white is a little gray so you can bump like just exposure i said that the skin was two thirds overall i think the picture might be able to go up like a third which is going to kick this white up to be a little bit more white and then that's going to make it feel a little less muddy it feels just a touch muddy but i hope that helps you joshua again it's a banger the fact that you're getting out of your comfort zone and asking strangers for photos is an amazing thing this is an excellent portrait i'm trying to just give you a couple of small things to make it even better and as i said earlier um to another one of my submitters eye contact is super powerful i don't want you to forget about the power of eye contact so if you've asked someone and they're like yes you can take my picture try to get that first photo of like that eye contact interaction because you had the perfect white wall here to do it like there's a white wall along this whole way so you coming in and shooting him this way you got plenty of white wall there to be able to get that like tight shot aiming in that way and then after the fact you come over here and shoot that picture you know i hope that helps you my friend that was joshua horn hone hone yeah joshua hone all right and again continue to jump out of your comfort zone don't stop that just because i gave you a critique on that photo keep jumping out of your comfort zone it's where your genius lives all right hello cardi i was hired to take photos of a group of beautiful russian ladies during their girls trip took these shots as well as some solo photos so far this is the one i loved and wanted to share i'm still working through the rest of the photos i use my nikon z62 with a New 24 member. millimeter 1.8 lens tin man becoming a believer 
Let's go, Tin Man. Welcome. Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate you. You got the New smoke. Member. Yo, Walt back for three months. Another continued believer. Let's go, Walt. Welcome back. All New right. member. Oh my goodness. Here they come. All the redos are coming. Welcome back, Matt. Thanks for renewing. I appreciate you. All right. New member. Welcome back, Turtle. Three months. Appreciate you. Let's go, Alice. Shooting something that is a little bit out of your wheelhouse in this winter New wonderland. Member. Let's go, Victor. Back for three months, my guy. I appreciate you. Welcome back. So the eyes and the eyelashes are a little bit extra. New member. Welcome back again. Three months, Scott. Appreciate you, Gunnarsson. Let's go, my guy. So exposure here is about under, I would New say, member. half a stop. It, it could definitely come up and you can see the, the, the tub. Obviously, this is in shade, but this is just a little gray and could get bumped up a little bit. You look here on the shadow side of her face, you see it's, it's, it's relatively low and on the highlight side of her face, it's low as well. So exposure wise, I would love to see this bumped up probably a half a stop the winter wonderland outside is really nice the tricky thing is because this is a natural light picture and you don't have any other light kicking in here on her we're starting to get a little bit of raccoon eyes in on her there it's because we need something you need a reflector um welcome alex let's go baby you need a reflector even here like reflecting back the light that's coming from the window and even the reflector is going to alex 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 became a believer welcome alex thank you for becoming a member let's go welcome to the club appreciate you all right so vicky the the exposure is just a touch low. Now, I don't think that that means that you didn't shoot an amazing picture. I think it is an amazing picture. I want you to also, I notice you dropped her on the third. Like, I mean, I'm sure you have your grid lines on on your camera, which makes it so it goes third across here and then another third across here and then a third down here that's not really a third but like third here and then third here which is exactly where you dropped her so i definitely appreciate it but as you know we have to think about the gutter and half of the frame and the half frame exists right there so because of that, she's a little bit tight to that side of the frame. And like, I would love you to push her over a little bit. I mean, again, you can do this in post just by sliding in and punching in just a little bit more. You can see that makes it just a touch more intimate. I like this crop as well. It's a small thing, but again, it's an incredible picture and what I see you doing is pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. It's working. The photography is amazing. And I know you have so much more edits from this session, so you can actually reprocess this and you have other ones from it because you shoot lots of frames, as I've taught you. Um, this is a level up, Vicky. And the fact that you picked this beautiful room, it's really great. Always remember to scan your frames and make sure that you're not including this stuff in the background, which you could easily punch out. Small things, but I think it's really, really pretty. Also, just work on the posing and make sure that like, the, the, again, I don't hate this pose. I think it's dope. It's just her hands on the same side that the light is, oops, where is my tools? Her hand on the same side that the light's coming from actually ends up blocking part of the light from hitting her face. So if you have her hands on this side of her face, then it actually opens up more light to hitting her. Small things, but again, really great job, Vicky. Good job. All right. Mm -hmm.
Hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Hope you guys are having a good time. Hope you guys are learning something. If you haven't been submitting photos or if you haven't submitted photos yet, I hope you're learning while I'm reviewing other people's photos. I hope like the whole point of this is this is a learning experience. You learn the most when you submit your own photos and have your photos like critiqued. That's when you learn the most. Um, but you also learn from watching other people's have their have their photos critiqued as well. So um, I appreciate you for watching. All right, let's get in to the next. Who's next for me? We have a few more photos. And we are ending at Edwin. I see Scuba Steve tried to get photos in after the fact, as well as Lindsay. So Lindsay and Scuba Steve, I will look at your photos next week. Um, but I will be looking at everybody else who submitted before. Black Phoenix, let's go. I tried combing some street photography and life, oh, I, sorry, my bad. I tried combining some street photography and lifestyle techniques while looking for a new book at one of my book clubs. Nikon Z6, ISO 800, 2.5, a thousandth of a second. I love the fact that um, Black Phoenix, you spend so much time in the library. This is it. This is, this is so good. This is so, it's, I know where you are with your photography and I know how hard you're pushing. You, you're really saying something with this picture. I really love how he's like, he's in his moment. Like he's truly in the moment, which I'm really feeling. The headphones, the outfit, the keys, is that keys? Yeah, I guess it looks like tools. It looks like screwdrivers from shop class. It's dope. I mean, he's doing research. It's great. If you look at this as a cover, it looks like a magazine. It does. It truly does. I mean, is this the perfect library? Well, no. Like, I mean, but what you're learning is you're learning how to shoot editorial. You're learning how to shoot regular people doing regular things in a stylized way. And you did this very, very, very well, Black Phoenix. Honestly, you did this so well. Again, I just... The more reps that you get the opportunity to do, the more opportunities you get to shoot and execute these ideas that you have inside your head, the faster you're going to progress. Like, this is really great. And also, I'm proud of you because you're endeavoring outside of your comfort zone and you're trying to shoot new subjects. You're trying to shoot new people. You're trying to get new people in front of your camera. And each time you shoot a new person, you level up. You get that much better. So stay on this path, stay on this trajectory. Like I'm very proud of you. And I also, I see what you're doing and you're also correcting the mistakes, the high ISO mistakes and some of the other mistakes that I called out last time, you're fixing them. So I see you, good job, Black Phoenix, let's go. Well done. All right. This is Matthew Sargent. I submitted this photo um, into one of the photo of the year awards categories. Um, but I wanted to give you ind get individual feedback as I think it's my favorite from the shoot. Cosplay in the studio, Christmas theme shoot. Um, first one edited in Lightroom. Exported to 16 bit TIFF. Um, and then imported into Photoshop and retouched and exported from there. He learned a lot from the shoot. Absolutely love being in the studio. Already itching to get back again. Sony A7 II, Tamron 28 to 75 at 53, F4, 125, ISO 200. Settings, good. Let's go, Matthew Sargent. Very, very good attempt. Good vibe. I mean, it's a kitschy Christmas shoot. You're using artificial light. The light is placed well. I mean, you're using unmodified light. The reason I can tell that it's unmodified light is by how hard the shadow is. And she is a little bit close to the wall, meaning like I would pull her, like if this is the background and your subject is right here, if you're lighting sideways and your light's from here, that light hits the wall. And if your shot includes that, you're gonna get that in the wall. So that's what's happening here is we're seeing where the shadow is hitting the wall down there. It's okay. 
The fact that you're using undiffused light really does imitate sun. It gives you that feeling of like hard sunlight, which I really kind of like. You've heard me talk about how the nose has to track the face. The nose is this way and her eye is this way coming at you. And because of that, that reveals all this eye goo on both sides. It doesn't look as bad on this side, but you can see on this side, because her eye isn't tracking her nose, her eyeball is actually hidden behind her eye, her eyeglasses on that side. And when you look at it quickly, it makes this look like a googly eye. You know what I mean? It makes this back eye look weird. And also the her head being this way and her eyes looking so far towards camera, it, it's almost too much. Um, again, I know the po there's so many moving parts, like you're literally juggling in the studio, you're dealing with light, you're dealing with expression, the clothes, like there's so many different things to deal with. I definitely appreciate the idea. But I want you to watch, I want to just look at your settings again. Um, 53 millimeter. Okay, so you shot this at 50. And because you're aiming just a touch I don't know if you're aiming down at her, but there's just her legs down here just look a little bit um, weird. Her legs down here just look a little bit weird um, and tapered. Just, again, I'm trying to figure out why that is. I think it's because of the lens and the perspective. The hair, the bangs, the outfit, all of this is great. For me, my what I would have done with the with the vibe is have her turn her head this way and look at camera, which you may have this pose already, and then front light because the front light's gonna push the shadow behind her and not offset. It's gonna be behind her, and again pull her off the wall. For me, the strength in this picture is closer, like kind of here, but the way that the hands are holding on the glasses is such a pose that it's like it's almost too extra we have to work on like shooting in between that moment and not like just having people okay hold it okay click like there's nothing natural about someone waiting for you to take a photo so you have to get into like a headspace where her holding the glasses, she doesn't need to hold the glasses. She doesn't need to, like, she just needs to do something else. That's not having her hands like, I don't know. It's hard to describe, but you only, you only go through that process by doing reps. I'd love to see some of the other edits personally for this session. Um, this particular pose is a couple things that makes me lose it. The, the hands on the glasses um, makes me lose it just a little bit and the shadow offset that the, the hard shadow she's too close to the wall so she needs to be either on the wall like leaning right up against the wall doing a different pose or off the wall so that shadow falls off one of the other ways i hope that helps i don't want you to get discouraged matthew i know that um getting in the studio is really tricky but you you'd need to do reps. The more reps that you get in the studio, the better. The more reps that you get with artificial light, the better. And also just rule of thumb, background, subject, the distance between the background has gotta be three, has gotta be three to five feet. I usually go in and around four feet as far as how close I let my subjects go to the background because when you're any closer, you're dealing with other problems and that problem is shadow and then that ends up looking amateur so things to watch i mean there's times to like use the shadow but not be so up on the wall um a couple of critiques i hope that helps matthew um all right next picture ken collier here's a picture i took in september just outside of downtown pittsburgh iso 100 f8 250 love the architecture of all buildings this is ken collier with a submission and i like the leading line i definitely like the leading line i definitely appreciate it for sure i want you to notice a couple things first of all there's an overall tone of gray although there is light 
there is dark and there is mid. What you don't have, unfortunately, is a lot of, I mean, yes, you do have white up here. And yes, if I really, really look way into here, I will find black. But I feel like the overall tone and the contrast of this is a little bit low. So I would bump the contrast a little bit. I would also lower the highlight slider um, a little bit to the left just to give you a little bit of separation with the clouds. I would also lower the blue saturation um, slider also that way, which will give you a little bit of darkness in the clouds and separate the darkness from the white. Also, you have to make sure that you're straightening your lines because I'm looking at your horizon line and the horizon kind of just feels like it's doing this looking number one at the bridge looking at the ground it just feels like the whole shot is like leaning as I'm looking here also at that line against the building looking at this line here against the building and it kind of just feels like the lines aren't straight it the whole thing is shifting um the whole thing is shifting that way so you need to straighten and make sure that you straighten your lines and you can be so disciplined as to do this in camera for sure you know what i mean you can put your grid on and make sure that your lines are straight you can put your leveling on which gives you that cue as well it's tricky, but for me, I can visually see that this is crooked across the this little area right there. And that for me throws off the whole picture. So small things, I love the leading line. The leading line is dope. I love the fact that you have this right there. You've left space because you've dropped that right in the center. So it actually works for the gutter. Although my gutter line's a little crooked. It actually works for the gutter, if that's the gutter line-ish there. And it's a good double page spread. Like again, it's it's like the small things. And everything that's wrong with this picture, you can fix without shooting the picture again. It's a reprocess where you're adding a little bit more contrast, dropping the blue slider, dropping the highlight slider, and doing a little bit of straightening, and then resubmitting. Super, super simple. But you also have to remember, when you're low and you start aiming up, it starts getting really hard to get these lines to get straight. Because you can see you have converging lines like on the outside of the frame that are like starting to fall inwards because you're low. So there's lots of lines that you have to get straight. I don't mind the lines converging in because that's natural, but the horizon you have to make sure that you nail. I hope that helps you, Mr. Ken Kalia. Thank you for submitting, my friend. All right, we got a couple more photos. We have one, two, three more photos to look at today. Edwin got one in two minutes behind before the wire. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> Nothing like waiting to the last minute. All right, Romeo. Hey fam, much love to you all. This is me jumping off the deep end. My first in-house studio shoot. I bought my first studio strobe lights and modifiers and I'm trying to make pictures as much as possible this year. Shot with my Fujifilm X-T3, 35 millimeter lens. Um, shot with a, shot at ISO 400 F5.6 at a 60th of a second. This is Romeo's shooting with studio lights for the first time. Let's go, Romeo. This picture looks like it's pre-cropped. No, it's not. It is a full frame. Good job, Romeo. I want you to make sure that you're, again, giving me a little bit more headroom. You're giving me just a little bit more headroom because, again, when you drop the masthead, you can see how it's kind of like this is the whole picture. Meaning if you want to make an 8x10, you're you're limited because if you want to make an 8x10 the picture is now this so you lose her feet and now that's the picture so without having to recreate and start building backgrounds and build although you can do that with like expand like you know ai it's pretty easy but still it's like 
I want you to just give your your people a little bit of space because when you're shooting editorially you're not trying to contain the person like like you're trying to just give a little bit more space and especially because of the pose and because she has her knees up under this it makes her quite blocky so that also with the way that her hand is it, it's like you need to give her a little bit more space because it ends up for me feeling like quite claustrophobic you need a light meter um you need a light meter because the exposure here is under by half a stop for sure um and, and again once you get the light meter and also the power of your light the power of the light is low compared to the the light in the room because there's not much darkness happening in this shadow so that means the ambient light is quite high so i would like to talk to you a little bit more about your setup make sure that you're trying to get like between 5.6 and like f11 on your reading when you're taking that shot for me the power the, the the flash power is too low and you can dial the flash power from like minus 32 all the way to like full power so adjust your flash so it's a little bit brighter it's gonna make your like your whole thing pop just a little bit more and also, last thing again, just give your photos a little bit more headroom. So pretend you're shooting covers, pretend you're shooting a magazine cover and don't be so claustrophobic with your frames. Don't be so claustrophobic with your vertical frames. All right. So again, color balance though too, make sure that you're color balancing and tapping something white so it snaps to the right color because it's starting to get a bit of a cast back here starting to go a little bit muddy which is what i'm also wondering about how bright your flash was make sure that it's super bright or did you use the flash for this one i'm sure you did but um yeah i have all kinds of questions i'd love to know a little bit more about your setup there romeo i hope that helped you my friend romeo romeo all right, last two. Joseph Michael says, here's one of my favorite captures of 23. It was taken at sunrise in the Cape Breton Highlands on Canada's East Coast in October. Never heard of Canada. Use the Z6 with the 20 millimeter 1.8 at 12 seconds. ISO 400 F8. All right. 12 second exposure? I guess, yes, I do see some movement here in the water. I'm hoping that you were on a tripod, my friend. I mean, you would have had to have been on a tripod to get a 12 second exposure. Like you would have had to have been on a tripod in order to get a 12 second exposure. I like it. I like it. I feel like the horizon line is a bit basic as far as just dropping the horizon line just right there i mean it, it it it's almost it's almost too much for me like dead half oops that's not a line tool dead dead 50 percent is right here right so you didn't drop the horizon right on the 50 percent mark you dropped it right there for me this horizon with this big blue sky i would have dropped this horizon like uh here <laughs> like super low and just drop that sun like horizon here drop that sun like right here and now like it's just water that you're seeing it's actually like just here and above that you're seeing which is so interesting when you crop it that way for me this extra band and then this extra band and then this band of sand is just it's so tricky shooting sunsets man honestly because they're so tacky you know what i mean everybody with a camera everybody with an iphone is shooting a sunset it happens literally 365 days a year so it's like if you're shooting sunsets like 
they, they gotta be it's gotta be fucking mental like if you're trying to be a photographer like and <laughs> i do understand it but we have to we have to be pushing into the realm of making pictures not necessarily taking pictures because as i've said again everybody and their mother with an iphone takes pictures so how we make ourselves different is by taking pictures and just trying to push just a little bit further i know you tried to push further by doing the longer exposure i got it but it's still just a sunset and however beautiful this beach is and whatever cool but we've all seen it we've all seen it i've seen a million sunsets as of you as is everybody so like what are you doing with your photography to push the needle that's kind of the question and like it's not taking pictures it's got to be i i have an idea for a photo and then you take it you've seen me react throughout the whole day about the photos that just blow me away what blows me away is someone having an idea and then executing it that's the shortest path to making money if you're going to take pictures you got to do it at the national geographic level and also there's a list of the best photographers in the world waiting for the opportunity with 20 30 years of experience like photographers at my level that travel all around the world and make pictures of the most beautiful most insane places and they're on the list waiting to get an opportunity to shoot for national geographic so the route to taking pictures to becoming famous or making any kind of money it's like it's a lifetime route it's a way shorter route like being able to execute an idea for a small business or for a person who needs a portrait or whatever so i'm always going to try to lean you towards making pictures over taking pictures because everybody does that and when you're also now taking pictures of something that is so like fireworks sunsets flowers like i got it but the subject matter has to be more interesting than stuff that everybody sees every day you know what i mean hope that helps all right so um let's get into the last and final photo of the day edwin devon a photo i captured of a friend at a local park during the day mid-fall i edited the picture gave it an almost sunset appearance sony a7s3 3 20th of a second iso 320 as well shot it at four the 24 to 70 at 52 i hope i exported correctly this is edwin edwin you did not export correctly in case you're wondering you exported incorrectly because your photo is only this large i can't click it i can't open it i've seen literally all over the discord instructions for how to submit your photos how to export how to size them i've seen it everywhere like literally somebody posts it almost every day i'll say again this is the specs for how to submit your photos they need to be 4000 pixels wide this is 1000 pixels wide they need to be 100 dpi if they are not that size i will get frustrated and i will also act like this and then also it becomes incredibly hard for me to give you a review because i can't click this picture i can't click this picture and make it bigger i actually can only do like this to make it bigger which is enlarge it and then the quality goes out the window so then i can't actually see if it's in focus so for all of those reasons it makes it really hard to review this photo um i definitely see the effect that you did i definitely see this big blemish on her head that you could definitely easily take out a couple of quick little things here the idea the light i see it and i appreciate it like i see it i appreciate it covering her mouth um i know her eyes the winner to the soul and all that but covering her nose and mouth in the way that you're doing it looks like you're trying to hide something i know that you're trying to add a mystery but the crop is a beauty photo but the hiding part of her face with leaves is like a mystery kind of thing that you're not including enough information in this photo to actually make it make sense do you know what i mean so 
again, my suggestion, the fastest way to progress as a photographer is look if you want to um, I did a search earlier, I said magazine covers, right? And I see this image that you've made, I would look at a girl who's very, very similar to that girl, like a picture like this. And then I would work on how can I make this girl, how can I make a picture like this? And why would I try to do it? Because it's on a magazine cover. It's the cover of Glamour and I don't know what I'm doing. So what the quickest way for me to, to get close to shooting how other people are making money is by executing ideas that you've are proven that work. This is not a, like the way that this is jagged and comes like this, like it's kind of Halloweeny. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's like, it's kind of October ish, which I kind of get, but I really actually don't get it. I don't get the reason for the photo because if she's a beautiful girl, show her face. If you're trying to hide something, hide it with fashion, hide it with a scarf, hide it with apparel that we can sell. Do you know what I mean? Wrap her face with a scarf with something that like, do you know what I mean? That you can say scarf by Hermes or something, but just the leaves there, I, it doesn't make sense for me. So suggestion, if you're doing tests or you're doing like creative shoots or you're trying to like shoot shot, like the quickest way to get good is try to imitate shots, poses, light that you see already in magazines already it's already in the magazine which means it's proven you're not going to have the same model you're not going to even close be able to execute it like like you see in the magazines but when you look at magazines you see poses you see light you see ideas and you think you see things repeat welcome. over and over and over again let's go kwaku welcome i think i know you kwaku alston thanks for hanging out with us so that's the whole point is like you look at magazines and you look at magazine covers so you can see what gets published, what works, what poses are happening and stuff. And when you try to do stuff now that is so left that you've never seen in a magazine, that means that it's a whack idea. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's like you have to do stuff that works. And if you're new, the quickest way is to see what works is to look at magazines. It's so inspired to look at a magazine and to see like, especially with black people to see like, what's a black, what's black girl on Vogue? What does that look like? If I have a black girl to shoot, how could I shoot her to make it look like it would be like a Vogue cover. So that's what you do then is you look at all the different black girls that you've seen on Vogue covers and then you shoot something like that. Like look at how beautiful this beautiful shot of Lupita, right? Super simple, classic, shows a little bit of the outfit so we can sell it. We can sell the outfit, we can sell the head wrap and we can sell the makeup. But when you go and you have concepts like this, it's like, I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? So for me, this one kind of misses the boat. And also please nail the sizing, nail the sizing, 4,000 pixels wide, 1,000 DPI. I mean, 100 DPI, um, 4,000 pixels wide by 100 DPI. Guys, that is the end of ah, this week's real photo reviews. I hope it brought you value. If you're watching at home, I hope it brought you value if you submitted photos. I hope it brought you value. You know, like the level of photography that I am seeing, by the way, Scuba Steve, you'll be the first one that I look at next week. Alice, do remind me that Scuba Steve, I haven't seen his photos yet or reviewed them. Um, by the way, if you wanna have your photos reviewed, you have to join the Discord. The Discord is where everybody submits and this is how I do these photo reviews. If you see right here, you will see all of these submission folders down here. Those are only revealed to you once you become a member and connect your YouTube to Discord. And then just like this, you'll see all the members that I have over here where it says Cardi Crew members. And you'll see 
all these people here who have connected to Discord and these people have access and these are the people who are submitting. So that's how it's done. And um, yeah, masterclass starts next week. Make sure you're on my mailing list if you want to know everything about my masterclass or on my Discord because I will talk about that there. The masterclass, you're going to have to go to my website and sign up. Once you do that, you'll get all the information that you need in order to participate. Yes, it is yes. a scheduled day. It happens once a month. Also, lastly, as I said earlier today, I do have a few spots left for my mentorship program. I do one-on-one -on -one mentorship with emerging photographers. Many of you are stuck. Sometimes one-on-one -on -one coaching is the best way for you to get unstuck. I've helped so many people get to the point of go from nine to five to full-time photographer. I'm basically giving photography school one-on-one -on -one to you. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider clicking the link in the video description and joining my mentorship program. I am getting glitch and you see all these camera glitches and stuff like that. You should know that I'm one of the only YouTube streams where my viewers control my stream yes, like sir, yes they glitch my camera they bring up taylor swift like all of this is just chat commands and you can see these chat commands and you'll see people typing commands in chat and things happen i'd really want to make the whole vibe of watching me like look do you see like i'm trying to be serious here dudes stop it for like one second my god i do this because the whole idea i don't want this to ever feel like school you know i'm trying to give information i want that to be high quality content i want it to be worthy and valuable to you but at the same point i don't want it to be boring i don't want it to be boring i want to have fun with this because if it's not fun for me then i'll stop doing it and for me i know you guys don't want to make i don't i don't think that you guys want me to stop doing this so in order for me to do this it has to be light it has to be fun and i like doing crazy things with my setup yes, sir, so yes. one of the crazy things that i do with my where's my camera back there one of the crazy things that i do with my setup is make it so you guys can control my stream so if you want to know how to do that just type exclamation mark commands and then enter and then you'll find out i think i missed a question earlier did i miss a question earlier someone asked a question i heard that but i was um ranting so if i missed your question i apologize um let me see here can i find that question can i find that question Did somebody have a question that i missed um guys if so, ask now. If I missed it, um, you can definitely leave it in the comments. I read all the comments of every one of my videos, every one of my podcasts. I answer every single one of them, um, or I like them if they don't need to be answered, but I read them all. So if you have a comment or a question, leave after right here. And lastly, you guys want to know photos of the week. So let's give you the photos of the week and this week's assignment because I'm very excited about this week's assignment. Um, a couple of you guys I know are going to nail it like easy breezy. A couple of you are going to find it a little bit difficult. But um, either way, uh, I'm giving it. Either way, you're doing it. And um, either way, we're going to see we're going to see some improvement, I think. Okay, let's give the considerations. Guys, what I'm doing right now is I'm choosing considerations for photos of the week. I do this live as it happens. So I am just choosing my considerations. I do a quick narrow and then I say who the photos of the week are. So please stand by. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh my God, there's so many goodies. So many goodies for so many different reasons. So many bangers today, guys. Really, really, so many bangers. Okay, guys, I think we have one, two, three, four, five photos. Five photos of the week, you ready? You ready? You ready? Our first photo of the week, proud of this guy. 
This guy works hard. We all do, but this one right here, Steven C. Photo of the week. Congratulations, Steven C. This is a beautiful, beautiful photograph. Like, beautiful, well executed. Well, it could be stock photography. You put it in a frame. It's, and again, stay the course. Stay the course. I would love to talk to you about fine art photography, although it doesn't make a ton of money, but you can market it properly. You should be doing a sub stack. You should have a blog going so you can share this type of work. Good job. First vote of the week, Stephen C. Congratulations, buddy. Our second photo of the week from a new submitter. Second photo of the week goes to a photographer who calls himself I Stony. First submission. First photo of the week i stony congratulations well done again your first studio light session your first submission there's a lot of first here and i see your potential i see your potential and um i just want you to keep pushing i want to actually see more photographs it's necessary for me to see more photographs so i can actually help you progress at the fastest level possible so keep submitting and Great job. Congratulations. First vote of the week. That's like, it happens never. First submission, first vote of the week. Good job. All right. And again, I don't play favorites. I just call it like I see them. I love all of you equally, but you're being judged against yourself. And when I see you level up, when I see you level up, you get photos of the week. That's kind of, it's kind of how it happens. So photos of the week. We have another photo of the week wiener. Another photo of the week winner. And this photographer, you know, this person's so hard on themselves and um, I believe in them. I believe in all of you. I, I want you to know that. But each time I say one of these things before I give a photo of the week, it's super important because I'm speaking directly to that person, you know? Next photo of the week winner. This person took a risk. They tried to combine two ideas together in order to make something work. And I think that it did. Our next photo of the week goes to the one that calls herself Black Phoenix. Let's go. Photo of the week from Black Phoenix. Let's go Black Phoenix. You combined an editorial, a lifestyle picture, a moment, you really did it. And again, I'm proud of you because uh, I'm gonna fucking get emotional. I'm proud of you because I know how hard you try and how important this is to you. So I see your progress. Thank you for progressing and thank you for believing in me to be someone to help you. Appreciate you, good job. All right, that was that was Black Phoenix. All right, our next photo of the week. You guys like this? You ready for our next photo of the week? Stay tuned, because I'm gonna give you this week's assignment. And the only people who get this week's assignment are people who actually watch this shit, who care enough, who believe in this meaning, and who wanna know, what do I have to shoot next? Yes sir, yes. All right, guys, you ready for our next photo of the week? Our next photo of the week. This is another one who took a risk. This one, is a risk, took a risk, but um, nailed it, knocked it out of the park. You heard me raving. Don't get the name twisted. This is Sebastian K with a photo of the week. Seal of approval, Sebastian, great job, great job. A truly a great real moment that you stylized, that you lit, that you concepted. Excellent, excellent, excellent photo, Sebastian. Congratulations. Photo of the week. Ooh, we're getting down to the last two. The last two photos. We have another 
newbie, another new one, someone who just came out of nowhere, but made an absolutely mind bending photo and chose to share it with us that I was just like, yes, I had a couple things to say, but it doesn't change anything different. Our next photo of the week goes to the winner of the strangest name of the week, Prod Long Sword. Photo of the week on his first submission. With this upside down, flippy all around reflection into water. So good. Congratulations on your first submission, first photo of the week. What the heck? Let's go. Well played. Well done. Great shot. Great shot. Show me the whole one without it being cropped to 8 by 10 And our last photo of the week, the shot that stopped me dead. From someone else who was doing first, and this is the thing that you have to realize, I put you outside of your comfort zone, yo. I make you shoot stuff. I make you try things that you're too scared to try, but with a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of help from this person that you're watching, this community that we've created, we create photographers like this. And the last photographer that gets photo of the week and the shot that I gave one of the best compliments to one of that I've ever given to one of my viewers. I said, literally, this could be my shit. Guys, your next and last photo of the week goes to Slippy Hollow with this photo right here. Photo of the week, technical perfection. Absolutely so, so, so good. I'm so proud of everybody who has the courage to actually put their work on the table, to have somebody who, ha I mean, I have three decades experience, professional. I've been shooting since I was 14. I shot my first cover when I was 25. Shot more celebrities than I can remember. I've traveled to more crazy places because of my camera that I can remember. And I'm telling you, I created this community because during COVID, I was going crazy because I wasn't able to coach. I wasn't able to mentor my assistant because he couldn't be around every day. And it, I started this, I started this thing and I was doing it to two people and nobody was watching. And now like I look at the numbers, like I look at how many people are watching me live right now. And it, it, it like, it blows my mind. I look at my subscribers, I think like 12 months ago. Gifted member. <laughs> it's calligraphy two in one episode, dude. Come on, stop it. <laughs> stop it, I'm running out of smoke. You're giving me too much, my guy. Thank you, Calligraphy. I appreciate you. New member. Another gifted membership. Rai J? Rai J? Yeah, R Y J? He just got gifted. Listen, last year, December 21st, I, I got a thousand subscribers for Christmas. Like I crossed from 999 to 1000. And since then, this year has been the most insane year of my life. In my career, with this channel, with this community, like helping you get better at photography gives me life, honestly. It's the best thing that I've ever done is, and I've always coached, I've been teaching. Like I dropped out of photography school, like university level photography school, got a studio and started working. Three years later, they invent, invited me back to lecture to students. And I've subsequently been teaching photography since I was 25. So I've been even doing this for like 20 years. The way I'm doing it now at the level that I'm doing it now and how seriously I'm taking it now, I hope you guys feel it. I'm putting together full programs, full frameworks, full outlines to take you from your nine to five job to be a working pro. Join my mailing list. The link is in the video description. Consider joining my mentorship program, one-on-one -on -one intensive training to help you get to that next level. And um, thank you, thank you, honestly. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thank you for submitting your photos. You know, 
putting your work on the table and getting critique is how I learned. That's how I learned in photography school. And what I've set up for you here is university level photography school, exactly how I learned, but in a modern way. With me, with my 30 years experience plus photography school, I'm trying to teach you Question. the way that I was taught. And um, it's gonna turn you into an absolute animal. We got a question, yes. Last question of the day. Next assignment. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question, Matthew. I'm sorry, bro. I got on, I got on a tangent, bro. <laughs> Calligraphy and the gifted's got me tripping. Okay, this is the assignment. Super easy. Um, you are an editorial magazine photographer at the highest level in your niche. What I'm asking you for is to shoot the cover of Behind the Picture magazine. I'm asking for a cover. You get one shot, one shot. What is the subject matter? Whatever your niche is, that's what I'm hiring you to shoot the cover for. So if you're a food photographer like you, Aiden, that means you're shooting a food shot for the cover of a magazine. I'm not gonna tell you the specs because you've seen a magazine cover. I'm not gonna talk about masthead. I'm not gonna talk about headspace because you hear me talk about it literally every episode. If I see a horizontal picture for an assignment for a magazine cover, I'm going to question, I'm going to question your sanity. I'm going to question your reality because we know all magazine covers are vertical, except for the three magazines in the world that aren't, that go out of business after three issues. Every magazine is vertical. So I am asking you for an editorial magazine cover. If you shoot portraits, you're shooting an editorial portrait as a magazine cover. If you shoot food, that's what you're shooting. If you feel like you have the ability to shoot a place and it is a good enough photo to be a cover, show me. You shoot architecture, shoot a building. Let that be the cover of Architectural Digest. I want one magazine cover from everybody who made it this far in the episode. Stephen C., always takes these summaries and takes this assignment that I'm saying right now and writes a little summary and puts it in the weekly assignment folder. So Stephen, I'll leave that to you. I want one magazine cover. Do not crop your photo. If you're gonna crop it, it's allowed to be cropped to nine by 12, or I wanna see the whole picture, no cropping. Cool, magazine cover. That is your assignment. It needs to be delivered to me Thursday next week by 5.59 p.m. Because once it hits 6 p.m., as you see, I no longer am going to look at that picture. Okay, that's your assignment. Thank you very much for watching. Understand also this stream was brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch, which is this, my cool beanie that I'm wearing, which is this, this cool hoodie that I'm wearing. All Bella canvas blanks, all super high quality. It'll end up being your favorite hoodie. Do consider checking my merch store. Links in the video description that you're watching. And lastly, the members of this channel make this channel so great. This is why you're able to watch me for one hour and 52 minutes commercial free. Thank you members for making it so I don't have to turn my commercials on during my live streams, which disrupts the whole flow. If you have a crown behind your name, thank you. And if you don't have a crown behind your name, look to someone who does have a crown behind your name and thank them for giving you commercial free content. If you're watching this after the fact, you got commercials because I turned them on right now. Thanks everybody, I appreciate you so much. If this brought you value, please leave a comment. Also, whose photo was your favorite? Did I miss a winner? Who do you think should have won? And also, do you agree with who I plucked? Who I hooked as the photos of the week? Do you agree? If you appreciate this content, please hit the like button. The like button is literally your friend. It's super free, super easy. Just tap it. It grows in numbers. More and more people see the video because more likes push this out to more people. So hitting the like button, making a comment on this video, if you got to this far and it brought you value, helps me more than you can possibly understand. As you can see, I'm starting to lose my voice because 
I've talked straight for an hour and 53 minutes and males only have a certain amount of words that they can say per day. So I think I've used all my words. Guys, I love you. If you subscribed recently, you'll see your name scrolling across the bottom of the screen. If you've become a member recently, you'll see your name scroll across the top of the screen. Don't forget, you get Cardi Crew emotes and you can use them even in the comments of any video that you want to comment. You can drop Cardi Crew emotes all over YouTube. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Watch another video.